I'm more successful at beekeeping than any other beekeeper because of the things that I do. I'm in Michigan, so I'm a northern beekeeper. I don't take my bees south. I do bring them inside because I did 150 new colonies last summer, made my own queens. So those colonies wouldn't be large enough to winter outside. And I didn't feed them syrup in the fall because domino cane sugar is too expensive. So last, last week, a few days ago, five days ago or so, we had a warm day and I was able to take out half of them. And I put them, the other half in this location. And then yesterday I put out the other half and I put them in another location. It doesn't matter where they were in the fall because they, the last time they did a cleansing flight was December 15th and I started bringing them in. So it's almost two months since they had a cleansing flight and when they do a cleansing flight towards the end of winter it doesn't matter where they were. They don't have issues with them going back where they were two months ago. So we had a storm last night so I got these covered up with some weight. And I'm getting ready to bring them in again for the rest of winter at the end of the day here. And this is a because I didn't feed syrup last fall, robbing was an issue with all the commercial bees in my area and domino cane sugar is too expensive. I put in a, a chick drinker feeder. And I'm gonna squirt syrup through the screen into this so that I don't have to worry about it running down into here. And I could probably not check it every day and just check it every other day. Um, I bought dry pollen substitute and I'm I'll explain to you later here. I'm not doing very good at that. I got to redo some of that stuff. So anyway, this is a small colony. I was at the end of uh, end of putting substitute, and then I just cleaned out the container and put in here. But, but uh, there's more substitute than these bees are going to need. See, this colony here would die outside overnight. It was in. Uh, it was actually 50s overnight. And it cooled off a little bit in the morning. It's still. It never got below 45 but it's gonna go back to 20s at night and 30s during the day and this colony will die. And this is this is the reason why I'm more successful. I'll pause this. I started winter December 1st with 150 colonies. I currently have 112. I've lost five colonies that I didn't catch. The fact that they'd run out of honey, I didn't catch it in time and they starved. Normally if I catch it the same day, I can come up with more honey, but I've run out of honey, and I'll show you my solution for that. And then I've lost two colonies from acidic acid treatment. The colonies are really small, and they didn't handle the treatment very well, and it killed them at the beginning of winter. So let me pause. This is the other group here. Okay, this, this is my dark room where I store, store colonies, and I'm, I'm building more room on my garage here, in my garage, to do this. I've got 56 colonies in here, and I've got a red light over there I can turn on, but, um, and I've got it so I can, I can get access to every hive, which is kind of important. When you start stacking hives, and you don't check them every day, that's when you start losing colonies. So I've got to, I've got to build up shelves. This here, here's a temporary Baker scaffolding with, with an extension ladder on it. I want to build the shelves in a, in a new room I'm, I'm building now so that I can get access to every hive that I have in order to go through every every morning and check them. And I've currently turned the heat on because I want them to do brood as soon as they get this pollen substitute consistency right. I want them to do brood and I don't want them to get cold at night. So let me uh, I'll show you. And I've got an upper storage there for stuff and loft. Pause again. Okay, my house is a mess and I'm ashamed to show you what the house looks like. For two days now I've been doing stuff in the, in the wife's kitchen and it makes a mess and she doesn't like it. But anyway, um, this is what I, I bought, the Dots AP23 Dry. And the issue I'm having is they want you to use heavy syrup. heavy syrup fructose corn syrup or any heavy syrup and this is what this is what I use because I want non-gmo this is non-gmo and I've asked the doc 
why don't you guys start using a non-GMO ingredients? Because I know several farmers that do a, uh, organic soybeans. They don't spray the soybeans. There's a market for that. I don't know why the dot's not doing that. I tried locally in the state of Michigan. Well, not even locally. All over the state of Michigan. I tried finding somebody that would, uh, would mill soybeans for me. Because I can buy soybeans from these farmers, organic soybeans, but I can't find anybody to mill it. I would need like three or four hundred pounds and I just can't do that so I have to buy this stuff from beekeeping supply stores and it's it's not non-GMO it's GMO um, you guys don't realize GMO it doesn't kill your bees right away and made this might make your bees do all right with your brood but it shortens their life because there's low-level toxic chemicals in this just like it's in your honey already because uh, when your bees fly out, it's already been proven, they're picking up all these toxic chemicals from the crop farmers. So it's in their honey, it's in the pollen, it's in the wax. That's why my bees don't live very long through winter. Instead of living five to six months, I can only get three to four. And I don't have air conditioning in this room. And it's currently almost 60. These are the bees that had a cleansing flight like five days ago. And I can't get all of them out and back in the same day. It's just too physically demanding there's not enough time in a day and I, I don't want to do it in the dark so these bees got a cleansing flight five days ago and they will be the next ones like a month from now or whenever we get another warm spell so they're going to have to wait and i bought the honey bee healthy i'm trying to make a trying to make imitation honey um something i didn't realize when you're making syrup with sugar you can only go two to one the sugar being two parts and water being one. And I've been making this uh, sugar cake or whatever you want to call it. I call them sugar sticks. Whereas I would get a uh, candy thermometer and I heat it up to softball. And it didn't really matter if it's two to one. It didn't, none of that mattered because if it's more, if you have more sugar than you have water, it, the sugar crystallizes. But that's okay. When you're doing something like this, it's okay for your sugar to crystallize. See, what I do is I'd make a thick syrup. And then I'd add the sugar here until I got like a porridge and I'd pour it on the counter and I'd score it with a knife. See, I got grooves in here. Score it with a knife before it cooled off. And this is what I feed them during the winter. See, right there. But they will die. If they run out of honey and this is all they have, they still die. So I'm trying to I come up with a, uh, this is two to one, two to one syrup. And then you, you read the, direction, the directions on here. For as far as feeding syrup, you know, I, I did measure it out a gallon and I did like six tablespoons. So that helps them accept this because they say uh, syrup is not as good as honey. But if you're feeding your bees syrup in the fall and they're making honey out of that, uh, <laughs> you would think that would be just the same. But apparently it's not. So what I do with this one right here, I don't have that chick drinker thing in it because I'm going to leave these out. These are my larger colonies, and I'm going to check them every single day. Those other colonies, I'm probably going to have to stack them because I don't have enough uh, enough floor space. So I just do that. And I did find one colony today that apparently they had no honey because they were all at the, at the screen, and I gave them a lot. I don't want to give this one a whole bunch of it because when it hits that inner cover, you don't want it running down the frames and, and down to the bottom board this stuff's expensive eight dollars and 77 cents for a 10 pound bag unreal two years ago it was 4.98 so um another thing i want to say my biggest issue again i keep saying is the toxic chemicals the crop farmers keep putting into my environment here locally causing my bees not to live right on the varroa mites i can get rid of them but it's hard to get rid of all the varroa mites because if your varroa mites are in the cat brood this acidic acid it doesn't kill the varroa mites in the cat brood. So if your queens keep laying, and I have a lot of queens that never stop laying, it doesn't matter that they were inside or outside, they just never stopped laying. But I hit them hard enough, I got the varroa mites under control, and I know that I'm going to have varroa mite issues if I don't do some more treating in the spring. <laughs> Natasha. So I guess that's all I got to say. Um, this is still the cheapest way to get rid of raw mites. They don't have a perfect method yet. Um, there's a acetic acid drip they're working on, but uh, 
FDA or whatever, the government won't let you do it. I don't think the government's on our side. If, if you see my videos, you know, your government's corrupt. Your politicians are stealing from you. And even though you think Trump is going to be on your side, he's not actually on your side. If, if, if he was against the system, they wouldn't allow him to be on TV. Um, all this stuff going on with uh, his court battles and stuff, it's, it's all scripted by the deep state. And, he, you know, TV... <laughs> Donald Trump's got a TV show, The Apprentice. I never watched it, so he's got some experience acting. So he knows what's going on. They're not gonna, they're not gonna allow him not to be elected president. They want him to be elected president because the deep state wants you to think Trump is for the people. He's gonna be on your side. Every four years, they give you somebody that you think is gonna change things, and has it actually ever changed? No. You're gonna have to overthrow the government. Get rid of all our politicians and all crooks are stealing from you. That, that explains our national debt, why it's so big. President Eisenhower warned us in a farewell address that uh, the military-industrial complex, he called the Congressional Military-Industrial Complex back then, he, uh, he warned us that it was going to destroy this country. They were out of control. Here's Jesus colony here. It's a small colony. They can't go outside. So uh, the military-industrial complex is is uh, in charge of our government, basically. Um, you get all these people that join the military, and they think they're they're serving the country. They're not. They're serving the corporations. They're making the rich people rich because all these wars, these uh, military uh, contractors that make all of the weapons and stuff, 54% of that money that they get goes to their uh, salaries, you know, and uh, and our military equipment that they're making isn't as good as Russia's. Another small colony. See, my colonies at, towards the end of February, they get really small because those bees don't live very long. I get got to get them restarted before there's no bees left. So um, I guess that's all I got to say. Thank you.